The concept of resonance is an important one in physics and in many applications as well. The, uh, it's important to, to the voice, the voice production. Your, your um, voice is really, uh, the sounds that come out of your mouth are produced by effectively an open, uh, an organ pipe that's open on one end and closed on the other. Closed down here where the vocal cords are, open where your mouth is open. Um, but there are so-called formants that are formed, the natural frequencies that are formed, V over 4L uh, times 1, times 3, times 5, etc., for these various frequencies. The, the width of these peaks of these natural frequencies, uh, odd harmonics that are present in this, in this pipe that's open on one end and closed at the other, the width of those resonances depends on the resistivity of the material, the soft uh, uh, throat material that dampens the sound and that's uh, the analogy can be studied quite effectively in an RLC circuit so this becomes a, a very important uh, tool for understanding um, production of sound as well as various other resonances in nature so I'm going to start off with a with a demo this is a demonstration of resonance I remember uh, way back in West Virginia, I would walk to work with my lunch sack, uh, as, and as I walked, if the lunch sack was just the right length, it would resonate with the frequency of, of my gait. And some of you may have noticed uh, your bicycles having resonances, or your old cars, when you reach 55 miles an hour, things start to shake. That's resonance, that's what we're talking about here. So with this ball, I've got some surgical tubing, and a ball attached in the middle, we're gonna dem demonstrate resonance. Things don't shake on your old 55 Ford or with the, the bag unless the frequency matches the natural frequency of vibration. And so if I, if I go too slow, then I'm not gonna match the natural frequency of vibration of this ball attached to the um, surgical tubing. Likewise, if I go too fast, there's, uh, I'm not matching the frequency either. But if I, if I find that place where the motion of my arm matches the actual, uh, see if I can hit Parker, yeah, maybe not, um, matches the natural frequency of vibration, then I get a large amplitude of motion. That's what happens in organ pipes and on violins and all musical instruments when that frequency matches the natural resonant frequency of the instrument. Okay, resonance, what is it? It is when the frequency of some vibrating force, in the case, uh, in, in the case of the demo, my hand moving back and forth, exactly matches or nearly matches the natural or resonant frequency of the object to which the force is applied. Uh, the oscillation of a mass on a spring is, is similar. Um, if you, well, if you're on a swing set, for example, if you're pushing your child on, on the swing, um, you have to match your pushing motion with the natural frequency of the swing in order to increase the amplitude of the child's swing. If to push once every period, if you, if you push at some other frequency that wasn't once a period, then uh, once per cycle, then, then you wouldn't be able to increase the amplitude of the motion. Same thing here, uh, mass spring system, if you're gonna try and get some, some motion on a mass spring system just by pushing it a little bit at a time, you have to match the frequency. Um, what happens in, uh, in an LC circuit, so-called, so this is a capacitor, and this is an inductor, that um, the, the, this is the, the time at which the capacitor is fully charged, with positive charge on the left plate and negative charge on the right plate. Well, what's gonna happen then is this is gonna act like a battery and push uh, a current around in this direction, so that's what this, one, this case is, that will change the um, magnetic field and the flux through the inductor. And through Faraday's law, there'll be a back EMF that tries to oppose that change. Then 
the current having passed through the inductor and then over to the other side, now the, the right side of the capacitor is charged positive and the, negative, or the left side of the capacitor is charged negative. And that's analogous to a, a spring being fully compressed. And then finally, uh, the current goes in the opposite direction, this time in the clockwise direction. And, um, and that maximum current corresponds to a maximum velocity of the ma mass spring system. Now, that's just the so-called LC circuit, which is at the heart of every radio. Why? Well, because you get a signal through the air, airwaves, that needs to be intercepted by the circuitry in your radio and amplified. And if you've tuned the resonant frequency of this LC circuit to the frequency of the sound coming in, you receive the, the sounds, the way radios work. But most circuits have not only an inductor and a capacitor, but also a resistor. And when that resistor is thrown in there, then you get the following interesting behavior. And, and we're going to derive it, de define and derive the resonant frequency for a series RLC circuit. The resonant frequency F0 maximizes the current for given RLC and B RMS. This equation is just the definition of impedance. You might remember it as VRMS equals IRMS times Z. Okay? And Z, we know. It's the square root. We derived that. Square root of R squared plus XL minus XC quantity squared. What we're interested in doing is to define and derive the resonant frequency So the, the definition of the resonant frequency. The resonant frequency maximizes the current for given RLC and BRMS. So I want to find the frequency that maximizes the current. that gives me the maximum possible current. It's kind of like uh, if you're in a bathtub and, and you're sloshing back and forth, if you slosh at the rate that, that the natural resonant frequency of, of, of the motion of the water, then you can get a huge uh, current, effectively, meaning a lot of water and splash it out of the bathtub if you really go at it uh, fully. So I want to maximize this current. Here's the current. And I want to get the biggest possible current that I can for a given VRMS, Z, et cetera, et cetera. To maximize IRMS with VRMS held constant, what do I have to do to Z? Maximize it, maximize it or minimize it? Well, the smaller Z gets, the bigger I gets. So I want to minimize Z. The smaller Z is, since it's in the denominator, the bigger I will be. All right, so knowing now that I want to minimize Z for fixed R, um, L, C, and V, R does not depend on frequency. So there's no way, nothing I can do about that R. This guy here does depend on frequency. So if, I, if I'm going to get the smallest possible value of z, then I need the smallest possible value of xl minus xc. And that will say that xl must equal xc. And you say, is it possible of those two things to equal each other? And I say, yes, it is. 
it'll give you a phase angle of zero, tangent of uh, phi was xl minus xc divided by r. So if we can find a place where xl equals xc, then this whole thing will be zero, and then z will be the minimum possible value. It'll be the square root of r squared, and that's just our old friend r, and that's the minimum value. So we're just faced with finding the frequency that corresponds to xl equaling xc. Well, fortunately, we know what xl is, and we know what xc is. What's xl? xl is 1 over 2 pi fl. What's xc? Well, it's 2 pi, I'm sorry, xl, I got those mixed up. XL is 2 pi FL. That's XL. And XC is 1 over 2 pi FC. Okay? Now we're trying to find the frequency that this occurs at. Where do we have frequencies in this equation? I've got one right here, and I've got one right here. I want to solve for the frequency. That's my job, the resonant frequency. How am I going to find it? I'm going to multiply both sides of this equation by f. Then these f's will cancel, and I'll get an f squared on this side. Then I'm going to divide both sides of the equation by 2 pi l. What do we have left over? This 2 pi cancels that 2 pi, this L cancels that L, we get F squared. And what do we have left over here? I've got 1 over 2 pi times 2 pi. That's 2 pi squared times LC in the denominator. You can do the math yourself if you don't believe me. Now to solve for the frequency, all we have to do is to take the square root of both sides of this equation. Square root of the left side is just f. And square root of the right side is 1 over 2 pi times the square root of LC. That is the resonant frequency. We're ca we call it f naught. So let's put a, a subscript here to denote f naught. So if you give me an inductance L measured in Henry and a capacitance measured in farad, I can take the square root of those two, multiply by 2 pi, and then take 1 over the result, and that'll give me the frequency at which you get maximum current. So this gives maximum current, IRMS. Graphically, um, it looks like this. This red curve represents RMS current, which reaches a maximum at this frequency, which is 1 over the 2 pi squared of LC. This is, um, what I'm doing is actually plotting the IR RMS current as a function of frequency, and, um, and that's where it reaches its peak. Well, the frequency, as we talked about at the beginning, uh, to, the ma to maximize the current, you have to minimize Z. So this blue curve represents the impedance, and it's at a minimum where the current is at a maximum. This is exactly how you tune your radio. What you're doing is, um, in the old-fashioned radios where you could actually tune the dial, change the frequency, you're changing the actual resonant frequency here until it, um, until it you're changing the frequency f of the 
receiving radio until it matches the, the frequency of the, of the radio station you're trying to listen to. And that's what happened, actually, with the, the demonstration that Parker and I did with the rubber ball and the surgical tubing. When, my, when this frequency, when F equaled F naught, the resonant frequency, uh, F naught, when I found that frequency, F, F is the frequency of my arm, and F naught was the resonant frequency, the natural resonant frequency. When those matched up, I got a large amplitude motion. And that's, uh, the analogy here is you have a large current, et cetera. So that's resonance. Uh, a quick example, three circuits, each containing an inductor, a resistor, and a capacitor connected in series. So these are series RLC circuits, no big deal. With an AC voltage source, the elements of each circuit are L, R, and C, etc. for all three, all four circuits. Which one of the following statements is true? The largest resonant frequency occurs in circuit one and the smallest in circuit four. Well, we want to find those uh, resonant frequencies. What is the equation for it? All right, so we're going to need the square root of LC in all of these cases. And so let's actually work out LC for each of these cases. L times C. Here's L, 100 millihenry. And here's C, 10 microfarads. So that'll be 100 times 10 is 1,000. And what are the units going to be? I'm just going to use really ugly units. Milla, Henry, micro, farad. Okay, so that's a thousand millihenry microfarads. We could put in the millas 10 to the minus 3 and the micros 10 to the minus 6, but it won't matter in this case. But we get a thousand in this case. What about this case? L times C. Well, that's 10 times 10. That's only a hundred. And this one's 10 times 100 is 1,000. And then this one's 100 times 100 is 10 to the 4, is 10,000. All right. Well, here LC is the biggest, it can, is the biggest of the four. LC is 10,000 mic millihenry microfan microfarad. So LC is huge here. But if LC is big, since F goes like 1 over the square root of LC, if LC is big, then F has to be small. So that implies small F. So here, F is small. And F here is large. You can plug the numbers in if you don't believe me. Plug the numbers in and figure out what the, the frequencies are going to be. But if that LC is large, since it's in the denominator, then F must be small. All right, so which answer corresponds to this? The resident, largest resonant frequency occurs in circuit um, well, actually, which circuit is this? This is 4, and this is 2. So we're going to get a small in 4. See, the largest is in 2. Largest resonant frequency occurs in 2, so that would be true here, and the smallest in circuit 4. Yeah, so that's the one. Largest is in 2. 